Diabetes is one of the few underrated diseases which sometimes is ignored by many. But you know that untreated blood sugar can damage your nerves, your eyes, kidneys, and even other organs. Now you can say, "Come on, diabetes doesn't kill." Indeed, it doesn't kill at the face of it. But uncontrolled diabetes will not let you heal once you are diagnosed with any critical disease, and can lead to premature death. Let's find out what are the causes, symptoms, risk factors, and how to really manage diabetes. Well, can this be cured? Let's find out. To discuss this subject, we have with us Dr. Nandita Shah. She is a renowned homeopath and author. She founded a social enterprise called Sharan Sanctuary for Health and the Connection to Animals and Nature to promote healthy eating in 2005. She believes that being vegan and eating raw foods can prevent issues such as depression, diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. She has written a book called Reversing Diabetes in 21 Days. Now that's something. So without further delay, let's welcome Dr. Nandita. Welcome, ma'am, on the show. Thank you, Pavan. Ma'am, I have heard doctors, people around me reiterating the fact that diabetes can not be cured; it can be managed. Though up off lately, I have been listening to a lot of people on you know YouTube advocating yogic practices that it can be cured. But you know, reversing diabetes in twenty-one days is really something. So please let us know about this. How this is possible? Okay, so we'll break it down into two parts. First, let's talk about what people say. and you know the doctors are right that when you go to a doctor and they put you on medications over a period of time the medicine spiral upwards so each time every year or two years you get more and more medicines and you get sicker and sicker and you may even land up with complications that you already mentioned so what is reversing diabetes you know when we go to the doctor doctor tells us to cut down sugar cut down carbohydrates and everybody does this and nobody gets well why does nobody get well from cutting down sugar because sugar is not the cause of diabetes high blood sugar is the result of diabetes the cause of diabetes is insulin resistance and if you want to get rid of insulin resistance you have to understand what is the cause of insulin resistance and the cause of insulin resistance is actually fat so when people don't realize this they don't make the necessary changes and they don't get well fat is just one of the causes of diabetes but a major cause there are other causes as well so once we list the causes of diabetes and start removing them we can get well now the name of my book reversing diabetes in 21 days comes from our 21 day health retreat where we do all the lab reports in the beginning and then we enjoy delicious buffet meals made in a healthy way and do all the lab reports at the end so that we can reduce medications during the retreat just by checking with a glucometer if they have diabetes and at the end we can see what are the results of all the lab tests and we can see that everyone gets better within 21 days now that doesn't mean that everyone's diabetes will be reversed in 21 days but a lot of change takes place in 21 days alone so because of the 21 day retreat my book was named reversing diabetes in 21 days but what it means is that diabetes can be reversed and it can be reversed within a fairly short period of time if we have not done certain things that are harmful before what are those certain things actually there are a group of medications that force the pancreas to produce more insulin and this leads to burnout of the pancreas and if this happens it's then doctors usually put you on insulin but then it's more difficult but in the early stages and early stages can even mean 12 years or 30 years depending on what medications you have taken you can reverse diabetes okay ma'am um i get you uh, but you know when you say that 
um diabetes can be reversed but depending upon that you know what is your condition if if correct me if i'm wrong right okay so somebody you know who has a diabetes say for past 30 years has been even taking insulin even for that matter so can he also be cured or no there are no chances at all yes and no so some of them yes it depends on the condition of the pancreas so let me put it this way 80% can be reversed some of them have turned into type 1 diabetes that means the pancreas is no longer producing insulin therefore they are taking insulin so these also may or may not be reversed but this takes a long time this can definitely not happen in 21 days okay so now for the viewers can you please even tell that you know what is type 1 what is type 2 diabetes what is even type 1.5 diabetes there is even a gestational diabetes even i have heard of even and there are other terms as well so what are the chances for each type of diabetes to reverse so let's mainly see most of the people have type 1 or type 2 gestational diabetes is a kind of type 2 diabetes okay in a sense it occurs during pregnancy but everything else is like type 2 So, what is type two diabetes? Type two diabetes is if your blood sugars can be controlled with medications alone. Type one diabetes is when your pancreas is not producing any insulin, and so you are dependent on insulin. It's an insulin dependent diabetes, right? Okay. These are the main things we need to know right now. Now, what can you expect with insulin dependent diabetes that the dose of insulin can be reduced to one third or half in within 21 days or within a short period of time by making the right changes okay but the rest is going to take time because the pancreas has to heal what can you expect in type 2 diabetes depending on how many medications you are you can expect pretty good results you in fact the results are shockingly fast our body heals amazingly fast if we do the right things so it's like if you have a car that runs on petrol and you put in diesel will the car work no the same way with our human body if we put in the wrong fuel in our body it doesn't run so what is the wrong fuel first we have to understand that we have been eating and living according to what we have been taught by our culture our society and advertisements rather than what we have been designed to do by nature or god we have to think that every animal eats according to instincts that means a cow will naturally eat grass because it knows it has to eat grass and a lion will naturally eat meat because it knows it has to eat meat but we've been telling ourselves in our culture that we are omnivores that we can eat everything and and this is what we've been taught even by our parents our schooling everything but if you think about it if we were in nature if you were on a farm or an orchard and you see fruits and vegetables growing instinctively you will feel like picking and eating them that's instinct If you see green fields of wheat and rice, our mouth doesn't water because we can't eat that wheat or rice raw, and every animal also eats their food raw. So it's not our food, but it has become central in our diet. And I do want to say that in order to reverse diabetes, we don't have to forego wheat and rice completely, but we have to be aware that it should not be. Fifty percent of our meal, and then um, imagine if you see a chicken walk by, or a goat, or a cow. Does your mouth ever wipe water? Even if you're a non-vegetarian, probably not, right? Because it's not our food, and we can't pounce on that animal. We can't tear it apart, and we cannot eat it raw. So this is not our food. so we should eat foods that are meant for our species now have you noticed that vegetarians and non vegetarians get the same disease 
That's because meat and milk have the same properties, high protein, high fat, and no fiber. And even milk is not meant for us, even though we've been taught it's the best food. But every mammal produces milk only for their young. And in nature, no animal drinks another animal's milk. That means goats don't drink pig's milk. Monkeys don't drink elephant's milk. We are the only species that drinks another animal's milk and that too drinks an animal's milk after infancy or maybe cats and dogs or animals that we keep in our house but actually it's not our food right so when we put the wrong fuel in our body it's like putting petrol in a car that runs on diesel we will never get good results and when we take away the wrong things that we're doing automatically the body heals because the body's function is to heal all the time. Body heals itself just like all the other animals in nature. They don't need so many hospitals, so many doctors, and not even so many medicines most of the time if they are living in nature because their body knows how to heal. Like I said, one of the main causes of um, diabetes is fat. Nobody talks about this. However, if you look at animal products, all animal products are full of fat. Boiled milk, fat on top. Boiled chicken, fat on top. Boiled meat, fat on top. Boiled fish, fat on top. So when we consume animal products, we're consuming a lot of fat. The other thing that we don't use is refined products like sugar, oil, white rice, white flour. So for example, if we wanted to sweeten something, we would use dates, raisins, fruits, etc. Natural sugars. Or oil. Instead of oil, if we wanted to add that flavor to something, we would use peanuts, coconut, sesame, almonds. Now, isn't it interesting that you, if you boil almonds or peanuts or sesame, even though they control, contain fat, you will not find fat on top, right? That's because the fat is held by the fiber. And it, the fiber holds on to the fat even in our body. And so it doesn't go straight into the bloodstream. So we have to eat whole foods. If we eat rice, it would be unpolished or whole rice. If we eat wheat, it would never be maida or white flour. It would be atta or whole flour. So we make sure that we keep all the fiber intact. And this is very important in healing. Okay. So uh, you took an example of a car where, you know, a petrol car, if we, uh, you know, uh, fuel, change the fuel from petrol to a diesel, so of course it won't run. So uh, you are basically trying to say that, you know, in order to replace that fuel, it takes about 21 days in, in case of a human. So we have, of course, put in a wrong fuel in our body. And then which, of course, has led us to diabetes and whatnot. In order to reverse the diabetes now, it takes about 21 days. And in these 21 days, basically, you are changing your fuel from what you were eating to um, what is right for you. Kind of. I'm not really saying that. What I'm trying to say is, if someone switches to the right diet, they'll be shocked how quickly their blood sugars come down. So quickly that within one or two days, we will have to start reducing medicines. And when people are on several doses of multiple medicines... It might take 21 days to reduce these medicines step by step without the blood sugar shooting up. But the body is very quick to show results. To heal completely, it takes time. But to show results, it's very quick. It's a matter of just days. In fact, in our 21-day retreat, I've seen people go into hypoglycemia within one or two days. I mean, okay. It becomes urgent to reduce their medications. Okay. So now when they come to the retreat, I often see them in the first day 
and reduce medicines preemptively, knowing that our, our menu is so healing. So when we start eating the right fuel for our body, the body just heals. When we put in medicines, the body is not designed to handle medicines. So before it can heal, it has to first throw out the medicines. Body can't do too many things at the same time. And that's why when it's throwing out medicines every single day, it never gets to the point of healing. So you're basically saying that, you know, cleansing and of course your uh, digestion, they, these are two processes which happens and then of course in the absence of one. So while the digestion is taking place, of course there is no cleansing, there is no healing taking place. And while the healing and cleansing is taking place, there is no digestion taking place. Well, not exactly. There are things happening together, right? Okay. But in general, while we're eating and digesting, healing doesn't happen at the same time. Maximum healing takes place when we're asleep or at rest. Okay. So, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the body is always working to heal. If we understand the causes of a problem and remove them, our problems will go. The problem is that most people don't think about the causes. Most people are thinking about the symptoms and what can I do to remove the symptoms but the symptom is the only way the body can speak to us and tell us that something is wrong so when we get symptoms we shouldn't we should thank our body for letting us know that something is wrong and see what we can do to remove those symptoms not by medicines medicines are just hiding the symptoms away from us, right? But what is the cause of the symptom and what can we do to remove it? Like, let me give you a simple example. When we get fever, our body tells us what to do. What does your body tell you to do when you get fever? Take rest, as okay. simple as that. Yes, take rest. What else? Uh, drink plenty of fluids, of course. Okay. And drinking plenty of fluids is what we've been told, but that's also what our body says that let me drink. And also mm -hmm. the body says, don't eat. Now, of right. course, mother may come and say, eat something at least, <laughs> right? And then we have been told right from the start the same thing that, you know, okay, eat something, at least eat something. Yes, because, you know, when we eat, the other person knows that we must be well enough to eat. But when we are sick, our body says, don't eat so that I can heal. If I don't have to do digestion, I can heal. So what the body says is, just go to sleep and don't do anything. Then I can heal. And usually if we go to sleep, we'll wake up with less fever in the morning. But if we try to eat all day and do so many things during the day, the fever will go up till in the evening. So the body raises the temperature in order that the bacteria or virus or whatever germs are in our body cannot multiply. And if we bring down the temperature with a medicine, then you are allowing the bacteria and virus to multiply because they can multiply at body temperature. They can't multiply at higher temperatures. That's why we actually cook food or boil food or heat things to remove germs. So when, when the body raises the temperature, it does so with absolute intelligence. And when we bring down fever with a medicine, we do it with absolute lack of intelligence. So you suggest, ma'am, that you know, in case if somebody is suffering from fever, that too high fever, say um, uh, 104, uh, even in that case, one shouldn't take medicine? Or one is... In general, one should not because we have to understand that the body is always wiser than someone else or us. And that chemicals are always harmful in the body because the body is not designed for them. It's the wrong thing to put in. right? 
that doesn't mean that medicines are never useful. They can be life-saving at some time. But they're definitely overused in our culture, way overused, and they are causing disease because they themselves have side effects that will cause disease. Okay, one, one more thing I wanted to understand from you is that um, does intermittent fasting also play an important role in reducing the or eliminating the diabetes? See, uh, whatever we do at Sharan is we guide people to eat and live the way nature intended us to eat and live. Imagine if you were living in nature, you can't pick your food before sunrise and you cannot eat after sunset. Automatic intermittent fasting done, more or less, right? It could be that you're eating within an eight hour interval or a 10 hour interval, it's okay. But you're giving your body a lot of time without eating in order to heal. But now with artificial lights, we can eat at any time. There are people who are having dinner at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the night. And there are people who are awake till 2 o'clock at night. So look, intermittent fasting is as important or rather eating at the right time is as important as sleeping at the right time. Rest is as important as exercise. If we can understand that we need to eat and live in everything, not just eating, living. If we can go as close to what nature designed us to do, we will automatically be well. In fact, if you're living the proper way, it's hard to get sick. Is there anything else which you would like to add? Because, you know, um, I think I'm, uh, I understood that, you know, okay, intermittent fasting naturally done good right amount of a food eating at the right time that is of course very important taking a sleep also at the right time like you know the day like you know whenever you sleep just make your sleeping patterns like you know don't sleep sometimes at eight in the evening and sometimes at 11 at night so it has to be also like you know uniformed no they're no, not uniform it has to be when nature when and expected us to sleep. That means there's a reason it's dark at night. If you uniformly sleep every night at two, you can't get well. Right? So we have to go in everything according to nature's rhythms. If you do intermittent fasting and say, hey, I'm not going to eat anything till 12 o'clock or till one o'clock and then I'm going to eat. No. You have to learn to listen to your body and eat according to your body's clock. Remember that body can guide you way better than any human being or any book, right? So Sharan has a five-point plan. One, that everything should be plant-based. Two, that everything should be whole. I already explained what whole is. Three, that we are the only species that sprays our food with poison, as in pesticides so that other species won't eat it and then we eat it so everything should be organic so plant-based whole organic and check and supplement vitamin b12 and vitamin d these are two vitamins that if we were living a very natural lifestyle we would have no problem in getting but since most of us are living in cities we should always check our vitamin b12 and vitamin d and supplement if they are low. And this should be done at least once a year. Then it's really hard to get sick. Okay. Um, any other message, ma'am, you would like to give to the viewers? The only message I would say is that we have to learn to understand our body more than um, reading books and going to doctors. We can be our own best doctor most of the time. And we should really think twice before putting anything in our body that nature didn't design for us. So, for example, if someone prescribes you a medicine by chance, right, then the best thing would be go to the Internet, look up the side effects of the medicine, look up what the medicine does in your body and decide whether you still want to take it or not. 
and sometimes it might be worth taking a medicine because medicines as i said can be life saving but in general the body heals better without medicines because today i saw a patient who had diabetes and hypertension for 12 years he was on medicine for 12 years he didn't get well up to now therefore he has come to me why would we wait that long it was lovely having you and also like you know a lot of uh, there were there were a lot of myth busters as well during the show i would say thank, thank you, you so much ma'am for joining us thank yes. you